cuties! It is time for the February TBR game. I'm very excited to be back with the jars of chaos! I'm trying something new. I did want to give you a little check-in before. Now, technically, when I'm filming this, I have not finished the January TBR. That's my goal after filming this video. Uh, I'm, uh, only halfway through. It's a problem. But our points tracker, here is where we stand right now at technically 66 points because I need to mark two because I literally just finished a book before filming this. So we're at 66 points out of 100 to let me buy a book. It's actually turning out that this is much more difficult. I've made this whole thing extremely difficult. I technically have already bought a book though, but that's because it was a limited time. Once I reach the 100, that's the book it counts for, just to let everybody know but Fairy Loot re released their Ruthless, Ruthless Vows and I had to snag a copy because I needed to match the one that I have. So we're justifying that and I will be a good girl and I won't get another book for that. I have to get another hundred to get that. For our spree, our win of spree, we have marked off some things. Uh, we're not at a bingo yet. We are trying. We have also started the... A to Z circuit, I decided I can start it at any time, uh, but I have to go in order. That's the thing, I have to go in order. So we've only gotten through B. We've got Alice Oseman and Black Powder War. That's what we've done. I have not started the Rainbow Challenge because I have yet to read a red book because uh, I have to start in order there as well. So that's our check-in. I'm gonna put these down and stop triggering my dog who likes lights. This one loves light game. No, don't lick off my makeup. Don't lick it off. I need it to look pretty. They're both sitting here because <laughs> we like the marshmallow. Everybody get a love sack for your dogs. They're the best because you can sit on it with them and cuddle and it's great. So if you are new here, I have several jars all throughout my shelves. We have a spinner wheel. I will be spinning the wheel eight times to determine the books that I read this coming month. Um, I might get more than eight books. I might even get less than eight books. Who knows? But I will have eight spins. And those spins will determine what happens. And we don't know. Now, last month it was good and it did exactly eight. But who knows what February will have in store for us. So if you need the full rules, there is the intro video. You can go back to and check that out. For now, let's begin with spin number one. Spin number one. <laughs> it moved. <laughs> we got, oh, a small book. Less than 250 pages. A small little BB. Okay. So we have the BB-8 jar. We shake it up. And let's see who is the small little wee thing. <laughs> the whole of BB-8's head is very small. <laughs> All right, we've got, ooh, a classic, which actually is good because I do need classic points. We have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. Um, I have read The Haunting of Hill House. Is that the actual title? House on Haunted Hill? Haunting One. I read that by Shirley Jackson. I have not read this one ever. I actually don't even know what this one is about. Here's what it says. My name is Mary Catherine Blackwood. I am 18 years old and I live with my sister Constance. I have often thought that with any luck at all, I could have been born a werewolf because the two middle fingers on both my hands are the same length, but I've had to be content with what I had. I dislike washing myself and dogs and noise. I like my sister Constance and Richard Plantagenet and Amanita Phalloids, the death cup mushroom. Everyone else in my family is dead. She doesn't like dogs, so I already hate her. Spin number two. Oop, TBR bag. And it is the first appearance of the TBR bag. My Sailor Moon lunchbox inside here is every single book that I own, that I have not read. Let's see who's the winner. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be, Lucy? Um, we're gonna pick this one. We have a sci-fi, I see it because it's green. The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. This is the book, I have heard a lot of stuff about this, uh, a lot of good things about it, so 
here's what it's about. When a deadly fly flu sweeps the globe, it leaves a shell of the world that once was. Among the survivors are 18-year-old Nico and her dog. On a voyage devised by Nico's father to find a mythical portal, a young artist named Kit, raised in an old abandoned cinema, and the enigmatic deliverer, who lives life after life in an attempt to put the world back together. As swarms of infected flies roam the earth, these few survivors navigate the woods of post-apocalyptic New England, meeting others along the way, each on their own quest to find life and love in a world gone dark. I like the illustration right in the beginning here. This is pretty. Spin number three. <gasps> the jar of challenges! Okay, I'm so excited. We're finally getting the jar of challenges. So, in this beautiful bowl that is actually apparently a tzatziki bowl, uh, I have a bunch of different reading challenges for me to do. So this is how the TBR can grow. Let's see, we're gonna pick this one. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm so excited. What is our challenge? <laughs> I kid you not! It says, just kidding, subtract one book. <laughs> of all the challenges. Okay. I don't have to pick a book. That's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> okay, well that just uh, goes right back in. So I guess I only have to read seven books this month. Maybe the game feels bad for me because of how January went. So... Okay. Spin number four. Oh God, a chonker. Greater. Chonky chonk. Let's read a chonky book. Our next book, I guess making up for the lack of another book, is The Chonkers. The little tree jar. I have many a chonky. Like my dogs. They're chonky. Because dad feeds you stuff he should feed you. Yeah. I can't grab anything. This one. We've got this one. Oh, oh, I dropped it. Okay. We have... I kind of feel bad reading this before I've read a different series by this author, but it is Castles in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian. I haven't read Ash Princess yet. That's actually a bomb book this year, I believe, right? Right? Yes, it is. Here's this chunky baby. It's 500 and 14 pages. So that classifies as chunky. She kind of looks like Kirsten Dunst. Like, she's got a Kirsten Dunst vibe to her. Cool, here's what Castles in Their Bones is about. Never trust a pretty face. Empress Margot has had plans for her daughter since the day they were born. Princesses Sophronia, Daphne, and Beatrice will be queens. And now, age 16, they each must leave their homeland and marry their princes. Beautiful, smart, and demure, the triplets appear to be the perfect brides because Margot knows there is one common truth. Everyone underestimates a girl. Which is a grave mistake. Sophronia, Daphne, and Beatrice are no innocents. They have been trained since birth in the arts of deception, seduction, and violence with a singular goal, to bring down monarchies. And their marriages are merely the first stage of their mother's grand vision, to one day reign over the entire continent of Visteria. The princesses have spent their lives preparing, and now they are ready, each with their own secret skill, and each with a single wish pulled from the stars. Only the stars have their own plans, and their mother hasn't told them all of hers. Life abroad is a test. Will their loyalty stay true, or will they learn that they can't trust anyone, not even each other? You've trained for this, my doves. You know who to strike. You know they are vulnerable. This should be fun. Spin number five. Oh, that's an Instagram. Instagram, Instagram. Well, next up here we have Instagram, I have just pulled it up. Ew, it's Harry Potter first. We don't mess with Harry Potter. I'm just gonna scroll through my my feed and see what books maybe come up. Okay, what's he reading? I don't own this book. There's a ton of books in this video. It's like, there, books. Okay, let's see, can I see anybody? I can't make out who's that. Why is there like all these recipes? No, stop the video. 
There's a vi another one that has all these, this full library. Okay. What do you got? What are you? Oh, I can't see. It's too small. Like, I see ones I've read. Like there's Priory, but I've read Priory. Ugh. I'm getting, like somebody talk about a book. Can anyone just talk about a book? I don't own that book. What's oh, Darren Chris doing? A little shop of horrors. Ew, Sarah J. Mass. Nope. That's not out yet. And I don't have an arc. Ha! I found one. Finally, that took forever. Where are you at, girl? Somebody had the entirety of the Marys on their shelf, along with the, the Janes as well. My imaginary Mary. Thank God. I'm actually really excited about this. Um, so if you don't know, Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows are known as the Lady Janies. They did three uh, series, or three books that were all about uh, famous Janes. They had My Lady Jane, My Plain Jane, and My Calamity Jane, which is my favorite. And then they delved into the Mary, so they had My Contrary Mary, who was in the same universe as My Lady Jane. Now we have My Imaginary Mary, which is, I believe, about Mary Shelley. Yes. Uh, but they twist... And they add a lot of like modern jokes into this. It's a very addictive style of writing. Even though it's chonky, I don't care. Here's what it's about. Mary may have inherited the brilliant mind of her late mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, but she lives a drab life above her father's bookstore, waiting for an idea that'll inspire a work worthy of her parentage and impress her rakishly handsome and super secret beau, Percy Shelley. Ada. Ada Lovelace knows a thing or two about superstar parents, what with her dad being Lord Byron, the most famous poet on earth. But Ada's passions lie far beyond the arts, in mechanical engineering to be exact. Alas, no matter how precise Ada's calculations, there's always a man willing to claim her ingenious ideas as her own. Pan, aka Practical Automaton Number 1, is Ada's greatest idea yet, a machine that will change the world if only she can figure out how to make him truly autonomous, or how to make him work at all. When fate connects our two masterminds, Mary and Ada learn that they are fae, magical people with the ability to make whatever they imagine become real. But when their dream team results in a living, breathing, thinking pan, Mary and Ada find themselves hunted by a mad scientist who won't stop until he finds out how they made a real boy out of spare parts. Oh my god, I'm so excited about this. This, look, this is gonna be so fun. Bin number six. Indie, a physical indie book. We move on to the physical indies. All the indie books I have acquired. Let's see who we're delving into. This one. Oh, ooh, this is exciting. We have The Gay Teen's Guide to Defeating a Siren by Cody Wagner. I'm very excited. I met Cody at Colorado Springs Comic Con 2022, I believe. And I actually had this on my TBR from a while ago and I met up to him like oh my god I didn't even know this was indie because it just pops up on my goodreads all the time as like an ad uh and so he was very excited about it I'm very excited to read it here is what this is about came out of the closet by accident check sent off to a pray away the gay school miserable check shenanigans ensued mega quadruple check Blaze Trails' worlds fall apart when he is dragged to Sanctuary Preparatory Academy, a boarding school that claims to fix gay teens. The place sucks so much that they even serve food like cleansing corn. Blaze's misguided parents eat it up and hand him over for brainwashing. But things at Sanctuary aren't what they appear. Blaze soon discovers the school's antics are all a lie. They're also at war with an ancient enemy. Between surviving bullies, rescuing students from mysterious attacks, and passing algebra, Blaze's life is going to get out of control crazy and freaking dangerous. Lucky for Blaze, he wields the ultimate weapon, being gay, and he's pretty good at it. <laughs> okay, this, this sounds so fun. <laughs> Spin number seven. Oh god, another chonker. <laughs> oh god. We have another chonky. Let's see. Who is the chonkiest? The chunkiest book there ever was. Who is the chunkiest book on my shelf? I don't even know. We've got... Oh, are you chunky? Did I just get super freaking lucky? How many pages are you? It doesn't have. I have just gotten extremely lucky, guys. Just got so lucky with a graphic novel. This is 560 pages, apparently, uh, for Sandman. It's Sandman, book one. 
<laughs> I just got so lucky. What's happening? Is the TBR game nice to me today? I'm very confused. Sandman, uh, there's not really a backlog on this copy of it, but if you don't know Sandman, it is about um, these immortal beings, one who is Dream, and he is captured by humans, breaks out and has to kind of regain his powers. He goes on a big journey. There are many sinister, a plot. Uh, I've known about this forever because this character here is Death, uh, and my sister used to cosplay her. <laughs> That's how I've known. I've never read it though. I've watched the Netflix series and was okay with it. I wasn't okay with one of the episodes, so I really hated the, the diner episode. Hate that episode so much. Love the serial, the serial convention. That was fantastic. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, I'm excited that season two is going to be coming out. I don't know if it's coming out this year or something. I know it's coming, but I got real lucky with a chunky graphic novel. <laughs> and the last spin is... Oh, okay. And another baby. Sure. All right. Another small baby, which this also could be a graphic novel. We'll see how nice the game is to me. Small baby. Like a pie pie. Who's my small baby? Oh, did you just fart? Someone just farted. No, but it's another indie. We have the second book in Here Witchy Witchy, A.L. Kessler's Deathly Magic. Uh, this book is 181, yes, 181 pages. Uh, this is an urban fantasy series. I don't want to read you this the back because spoilers, but we have our main character who is a witch and is also a detective. This is the only kind of way you can get me to watch or watch read a detective book is if it's spooky because I don't really like detective mysteries and stuff. Uh, but this is a great uh, series. I did enjoy the first book. I'm excited to delve in. Uh, it's also clean. Because A.L. Kessler writes both clean romance and spicy romance, and this is from her clean series. Um, but she's got range, y'all. So, <laughs> um, yeah, this is very exciting. I'm, I'm happy. Oh my god, two indies. And this is not a bad TBR at all. This is pretty solid. Well, the Jar of Challenges was uber nice to me, and I have only seven books to read in February. It's a wild time. Well, let me know what you guys are going to be reading in February. And uh, yeah, check it out. I am doing uh, book reviews on uh, shorts and TikTok and Instagram. So I'm not doing big giant reviews anymore. So if you want to know how I feel about these books, go check out my socials on TikTok. I'm at Stephanie and Mambo on there because I do a lot of parrot content as well. And then Instagram, QWERTYQ, and YouTube is here. But uh, YouTube limits things to 60 seconds so they often get cut off because I don't shut up about books. If you want to see reviews go check out my TikTok or Instagram to get the full reviews if I'm unable to keep it down to under a minute. Uh, but yeah that's what I'm gonna read and go check out the Kofi page if you want to support me as a content creator and I'll see you next time cuties. Bye! Sorry, that was an accident. My little sheets are reflecting off the sun and it is triggering a dog. No, I'm sorry, it's not, it's not, it's not L-I-G-H-T. It's, I can stand further back. Okay. Okay, but what? Why is this on my face? I, I, I have to send that to Tycho. Kessler, Kessler, Kessler. Oh, it's slippery. These books with the gloss, they're all slippery. <laughs>